My name is Greg Hill. I'm the director of a search consultancy in Acton Mass called Excel. Um, how, I guess per perhaps maybe I'll give you a little background on how I ended up in this business, and uh, by choice, believe it or not. But uh, about nine years ago, I started an e-commerce website that was a hobby site and ended up having about a half dozen products. And many years later, it ended up having 10,000, and the hobby site was no longer a uh, hobby, it became a career. So, um, And what I found at the time, there were there were two types of SEOs. There were either the type that were way too expensive and very competent, or incompetent and incredibly cheap. So I figured the only way that I was going to be able to, at the time, figure out how to get my site ranking well would be to learn how to do it myself. So that set me on a long journey. I got to the point where this, the, uh, the business was taking me in directions I didn't want to go in, spending a lot more time on customer service and other types of uh, areas of the aspects of the business that I just frankly didn't enjoy. So I sold the business and started my consultancy. And so we've been helping e-commerce clients, uh, lead generation sites. Um, we uh, also do Drupal development for a little bit skewed from the, the current, I, I shouldn't say that in the moment, but, um, <laughs> and we do a lot of Drupal SEO, but we also optimize all sorts of different sites. So um, we're a small team, we're about five, and uh, we're, we have a very boutique type of approach, so every site's different, there's not a, you know, it's not a machine. So uh, that gives you a little background. Um, one question I wanted to ask everybody is, does everybody really know what SEO is? Raise your hand if you really know what SEO is. Wait a minute, I should put my hand down because it changes, so. <laughs> um, okay, the next, so really I think that originally it was just about rankings, right? It was, you know, there weren't many games in town and you were just about to get better rankings on whatever search engines were out there. And uh, 2009 seemed to be the year of SEO was dead. Every article on the planet was about SEO was dead. And I kept shaking my head because I just, I realized, okay, it's dead, but how come I have so many more places now I have to optimize? I have to optimize my LinkedIn profile, my Twitter account needs to be active, I need to be uh, all over the web, right? So. Job security, am I out of business or am I finding more places to optimize? And so that's really what SEO is about. It's just really about connecting um, our clients with their audience and helping them to uh, achieve the objectives they've set out with their website. So that's SEO from my perspective. Um, how many of you are web developers? How many of you are hardcore coders? How many are you just absolute newbies and you're really curious? Okay, so we get a little bit of a little bit of each. So there's a lot of in between. Um, okay, my, my, my presentation is really geared for more uh, development. So, uh, and it's over ambitious. It's really long. So what we'll do is skip over a lot of that. Uh, and if there are any areas that you feel that I'm going too fast on, or you would like me to uh, delve into, please you know, just raise your hand, um, and we'll, uh, we'll attack it. So, again, defining, engaging, and converting your audience through content, search engine, search optimization, social media. That's really where our definition of SEO is now. Um, we focus mostly on organic search. And the reason for that is can be clearly defined by this heat map on, on Google. Um, roughly 80 odd percent of the clicks go to organic results. Results you see on this side of the Google search page or bank. Uh, I'm going to skip over the, the reasons for it. Um, 
But I want to talk about some of the areas that we'll uh, typically dive into uh, on a campaign. Keyword, keyword targeting, I think, is key to every uh, search engine optimization effort. Um, I mean, using a cliched old saying, but you know, if, if you don't know where you're going, how do you get there, right? So, uh, keyword research really is about defining your, your audience, what their interests are, and aligning your website with those interests. And a lot of times in the process you find that, uh, we, we've actually encountered scenarios where our client's concept was, was, was doomed for failure. There was not enough um, interest online for a, uh, a website of their type to exceed using online as their top marketing channel. So uh, it, it, it creates an opportunity to find out, to vet out your ideas, and to align the site with your audience. Right? Uh, there are several aspects of SEO. There's on page. The things that we do on the site itself, on the web pages themselves, make them more appealing to both the audience and to the search engine. There are off page components where uh, linkage becomes a factor. Um, and I see some puzzled faces. So if you have a question, please raise, because I'm, I'm, I'm covering some ground and I don't really know where your skill sets are. So um, Google came up with this concept of backlinks measuring the value of a web page, right? So if somebody links to a page, that page is more valuable than a page that doesn't have a link to it. It's a boat, right? So the more boats you have, the more popular the page. Now that algorithm has grown to be more complicated over time, and we've filtered out a lot of spam and things like that, but, uh, you know, off-page is an area that's really vital to the success of a, of a website. Um, there's also a technical side of SEO where you're configuring the server, um, um, IIS, Apache, whatever web server you're using, the physical server itself, et cetera. The social media, analytics, you know, I mean, Lord Kelvin, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it, right? So. If you don't know what's going on with your site, um, you're doomed to really do the same, make the same mistakes over and over again. Learn from what people are doing when you visit your site, where your traffic sources are, and things like that. Um, pay per click. Does everybody know what pay per click is? No. no. Uh, pay per click. Let me go back. Pay per click. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so good. All right. Uh, conversion. Uh, conversion. Let's say you have a really conversions. I think are a really vital part to a campaign because, or 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 any efforts that effort that, that you uh, take on the on the part of improving your website. Because let, let's say you have a million visitors a, a month. But nobody buys. How? What is the value of, of, of that traffic? Right. It's it's valuable because you you know you can fix a problem and you, and you have the, the traffic. However, if um, if you don't know how to fix the problem, um, it has no value, right? So, making the pages um, work better so that the visitors come to the page and achieve uh, some goal that you've determined as a measure of your success for that page, right? Um, so pages need to be optimized, whether it's changing a headline, changing a graphic, um, maybe in, improving your calls to action, things like that. These are vital areas for conversion. Questions? Okay. I'm either way over everybody's head or I'm being too far lo low. Where am I? Where am I? Uh, let's see. We talked about keyword targeting, okay? Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go back into that. Um, 
I will say that content really is the key to a successful site, right? I mean, if you go to a website and it, it doesn't have something appealing, then you, you just won't stay, and you'll 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 uh, uh, visit another site that does have what you are seeking, right? So, this is again the area where keyword research will help. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time here. I think people. Do people understand the, 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 the idea of content marketing, using content to promote your, okay. so we'll move on from that. Um, one thing I will talk about quickly is the places where once you've defined your keywords, and right now we're kind of actually getting into the nuts and bolts of it. Um, where, once you've defined the keywords that you're looking to promote or to connect your audience uh, uh, through, right? where do you put them? Generally, it's best to optimize a page for one keyword phrase. Uh, you, can you can increase that. Sometimes you can optimize for two. But if you've been to sites and it looks like some SEO came in and, and, and wrote a whole lot of gibberish and you're like, well, why is there seven keywords in a row and it, it, <laughs> it, it just really detracts from the whole page, right? It turns people up. It turns the page into spaghetti, really. So, I try and optimize for one keyword phrase at a time. Um, I do include keyword variants in a page. So, you know, Google and, and Bing and, and Yahoo see singular versus plural are two distinct keyword phrases. So, in this case, if you had a key phrase that, that had value and the plural version of it was also had a significant amount of value, you really now have to optimize two pages. You can get creative about how you do that, but you really should do two pages at that point. Um, now, this is a good example of a site that we recently uh, completed. In fact, I think we completed about a week ago. Um, this points out a few key areas where you can include uh, a keyword. First is in the title tag. Does everybody know the title tag? The title tag, um, getting the keyword at the start of your title tag uh, has shown to, to uh, uh, be a very successful tactic. Then utilizing some kind of direct response copy for the rest of it. And if you can include the keyword in that direct response copy, um, that's ideal. Um, if you've been to the search engines uh, and you see the links and the snippets, some of them are really well written. They're compelling. You want to click them. That serves a, a direct response kind of uh, function. So let's say you're number two and you're the leader, number one, the, the site that, that holds number one has a poorly written title and snippet, the, the text underneath the title, well, you actually could rob traffic from that number one position. Now, they'll get the bulk of the traffic simply because they're number one, but you can get a lot more traffic by robbing their, uh, <coughs> being a parasite, if you will, by writing good copy. So it's, it's almost like earning another um, uh, position or two, right? So it's vital that the meta description um, and the title tag are both really written well, written in a compelling fashion in a direct response style, ideally causing somebody to click uh, into your site, okay? So, search engines two, um, the title tag probably is the most important uh, on-page element of a web page from, as a ranking signal title tag is number one. So I've literally seen blank pages, pages that were full of either flash that you know had no um, text in the source uh, beat out other pages. I'm not recommending that. <laughs> this is a tactic. Uh, and it doesn't work frequently, but it, 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 the title tag has a lot of power. If you get that right, the rest of the pages it's a lot easier um, to get results if you get that right. Um, here, you can't see it, but there's a drop-down with keyword phrases 
in the, yes, please. I have a question about title tag. Should all the pages be the same title tag or so different pages should have different Only title if you want to uh, do poorly. They, they like to see unique tags on every single page. Okay. Um, so, and that's a challenge. Sometimes, especially you know, if you get into a you know thirty thousand product <laughs> e-commerce site, and and you have a, a deep category that has you know hundreds of very similar, you know, in this case, you know, we have a site that's about scarves. So you know, how many variations of that can you come up with? It's, it's not always easy, and you can't always get the keyword at the start of the title tag, but you do your best. You know, if in fact. If you, if you do some searches, you'll see that the keyword isn't always at the start, but it's good practice. Um, the ones that tend to do well will have it towards the start, and everyone will be unique. So the challenge is everybody likes to put the company name, the domain name, or the company name at the start. Um, well, you're, you're causing issues. You could get away with that on the home page, Ideally, I prefer not to, even on the home page. Um, some people say that from a usability perspective, having the keyword at the, uh, the, the domain name at the start helps with their bookmarking, right? I mean, you, you have hundreds of bookmarks, very easy to find, but I don't know, I'd rather cause a few people to have to re enter, rename their bookmark than lose out on thousands of uh, visitors. Um, so. Yeah. You said that they look for unique title tags. Yes. Do they, is there any to the downside to having, um, for example, the name of the company or, or a brand at the end that's consistent across all pages at the beginning is different? Yeah, in fact, um, you know, that's the practice I tend to follow. Oh. I'll push the, the company name towards the end. I wasn't sure if I misunderstood you when you were saying that the tags should be entirely different without the Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, the domain name is, is often, you, certain sites you, you just have to have it, and no, I don't, I don't really see a drop off in having the domain name as part of the title, as if it's pushed to the end. And also, you know, I've seen some research that showed that, you know, uh, separators, uh, spaces, bar, uh, comma, uh, uh, colons, all of these things, Google, you know, they, they parse them as, as spaces. They don't really, they remove them. Um, so search engines aren't looking at those. So somebody the other day recommended using a comma because, you know, the bar you have space, bar, space. And if you type for space, you only have about 66 um, characters and spaces to work with. Um, and you're tight, use a comma. It'll just save you a few spaces. Can you just read that middle type? Yeah, this that. one, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it says scarves and wraps. And you'll notice scarves and wraps, scarves and wraps in the uh, alt tag, alt text. The, uh, it says scarves and wraps. You can't really see that, but you know I'm calling it out here. The title. <coughs> the product title is also an opportunity to work in uh, the, the uh, keyword. Obviously, some of some of that just happens on the internet without any effort. It's just the way it is. But um, uh, yeah, alt text. Um, the title attribute really doesn't add anything from a ranking perspective. It's useful from a usability perspective. But, uh, here, we've, we've got um, scarves and wraps in an H1. You know, try and keep one H1 per page. That's a very common best practice. Um, you can have multiple H2s, multiple H3s through sixes, fine. Especially if they're following the standards. And, but typically, you'll only want one H1. And here in the navigation, it's a drop down, CSS, uh, HTML. So everything's in hrefs and 
uh, nice anchor text, all keyword optimized. Uh, that's the one nice thing about e-commerce sites is that they're categorized and it's a great opportunity to start working keywords in for each of those categories, defining the categories based on key keywords. Any questions before I? Yes. Let's say if you need more than one title on the page, let's say you have Scott's and Rapid. More than one headline? Headlines, yeah, sorry man. Yeah, that's I'll fine, I'll that's fine, but I would not use more than one H1. So you said that it's H2 with the same style? Yeah, okay. well you can style it any way you want. Um, but yeah, just keep one. Okay. But what's wrong with two? This kind of boils down to, I mean, a lot of the algorithm that, a lot of the algorithms developed to rank web pages uh, were comparatively very simple years ago, but everybody learned how to game the system very quickly. So, you know, if 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 an H1 is really impactful, why not have 27 H1s, and why not have uh, you know keyword stuffed alt tags that, that are you know 6,000 characters so long? So Google needs to have spam. Yeah, they filter. Filtered out, they might consider it to be spam. They're not necessarily going to, but it's just the best practice to keep one um, H1. And usually, if you think about it architecturally, it, it's reasonable to have one. I mean, do you really need more than one? I mean, you're, you're defining the page with your H1 tag group, right? You're not needing 27 of them. You really only need one to define the page. And then You'll have a bunch of subheads heads because you have, you know, uh, different sections of that page, right? So those fall into the H2 through 6 tags. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah. Spam drove a lot of what's going on. Without spam, everything would be a lot simpler. Um, okay, so you got those. Also, uh, other places you can work keywords in are uh, file names. So if you have an image, don't just name it DSC-001FG, right? Call it keyword-phrase.jpg, keyword right? Work the keyword in. I mean, you could put some kind of categorization or whatever numbers or whatever in there, but just put a dash and then uh, otherwise you'll be writing for some weird term in your, in your URL. So URLs, resources, uh, work the keywords in there. So for example, if you have a, going back to the scarf site, we had a, we have a scarf and wrap section we have a, um, uh, no, we have a soap scarves, we have a, a, a wrap section. So, you know, each of those categories will have uh, the, the, um, the keyword in the URL. Uh, title we talked about, anchor text. Um, anchor text, uh, I, I'm not seeing, anchor text is really something good to vary. So a lot of people went out and they said, okay, well, anchor text is really powerful. Everybody knows what anchor text is, right? Yes? I, wait at, uh, I have a no-dose screen here. <laughs> it's coming up. I just, maybe I need an earlier. I, I, okay, I'm gonna, maybe, uh, yeah. who, uh, who doesn't know how to code HTML? Or any, yeah, basic. Who, 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 who's a basic? Who knows some basic HTML but wouldn't be classified as expert? All right. So, uh, who has built a site? Okay. 
Brian, you want to help me with it? What do, what do you think I should do here? I think we need to give away one of the books. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the one. Yeah. I think the one. I know that book is away now. Yeah, I bought it on the and, and <laughs> Who is desperate to build a site but really needs some HTML skills in order to do it? They can look at the answer to the question. <laughs> What's that? They can look at the answer to the question you were asking. Which yeah. <laughs> who would like a yeah? Who would like a reference guide to understand what it is I'm talking about? I, I think you're you you keep you you, you keep me away. So I think. All right, is that good? Uh, maybe you can bother with the first name. Yeah, we can we can we can work part or something out. Let's get out. Yeah. All right, so. Um, anchor text. Um, you know, lately we're seeing that some anchor text diversity is really helpful. So, for example, if your if your keyword is boat oars, and you went on an anchor t a, a, a link building binge, and you got twelve thousand uh, links to your site, and they all say uh, boat oars, that looks a little artificial, doesn't it? Somebody's gaming the system, right? When when they see a shock of, you know, the, the site's been around for two years, has 200 links, all of a sudden now has 12,000 links, and they all say, boat oars. That's got to raise a big red flag to somebody, right? So, you know, having some diversity in your, your anchor text, building links on a consistent basis, earning them is really the best way to go. Um, social media, I'm finding, you know, is a wonderful way to do that. Twitter, for example, is a great way to get pages indexed. They don't necessarily improve your page rank, the links from Twitter, because they're uh, no followed, but you're making Google aware of a page, you're making Bing aware of a page, you're making Yahoo aware of a page by having that link in there, so. Um, okay, strong and bold, right? Bold and, and italics another good way of, of calling, you know. But again, it's kind of like alcohol, you know, everything, just a little moderation, you know, it's always a bad idea if you've just gone on a binge and the next day you really regret having done it. So here, strong and uh, use the moderately. I got a question yeah, please. On that. Um, so strong and EM are sort of out of favor in favor of CSS. So when you style things, you lose our search engines. You don't have to. to, yeah. You don't have to. Well, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's certainly a propensity towards. They're reading. CSS. They're, well, you know, a couple of a few years ago, they were. Oh yeah, they, they're not reading them. And then somebody did some testing and found that you know, they are reading them. So I would say that if you think they're reading them and you're trying to do something that is sneaky, they're reading them. Um, in your case, you're asking me a legitimate question, you know, CSS, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean you can't use the tags if you're calling attention to the key phrase, but again, you just need to do it uh, moderately. You know, if you did it once on a page, that's fine, but you just don't want to have uh, like 400 words of, of you know, keyword uh, text in, in, a, in a, you know, a strong tag, and it just, it just, you know, I mean, but these are things people do, in fact, I. Somebody asked me to look at a, a site today, earlier today, and I looked at it, they said, well, how come I'm not ranking for my keyword? I said, I looked at it, and the page didn't have the keyword on it. I said, well, okay, there's one signal that, that tells me why you're not ranking for it, but they had two paragraphs of text that was about 2% difference from the background color and the text color, and it was done in CSS, but, you know, essentially, they're trying to hide it. And I don't think that anybody looking at the site would say that text is there to be helpful to the user because the user can barely see it. So, you know, I think the golden rule too with spam checking is, you know, Google likes to do things algorithmically. The other search engines like to do things algorithmically because it's less costly, right? But you have to look at it and say, okay, if somebody from their spam team, did a hand check and looked at the page, would it pass? 
And if, it, if a human looked at it and it was the page was legitimate, had good quality content, wasn't pulling any silly stuff, then yeah, right? So in your case, um, it's a good question. CSS um, um, has changed the game somewhat. You can still use the tags, just don't go crazy with them. I think microformats in RDFA might be really the way to bring some of that back, right? So I think that's where we're headed anyway. I mean, we're, they're supporting some of that now. In fact, um, I, I don't really, we're just delving into it ourselves now. Um, so, uh, in fact, I've got a good slide later on. And if we get to it, um, there's a link I recommend you go to it because um, Joost de Balk, um, his site has a, uh, a, a post about um, about microformats and how to apply them, and it just makes it stupid simple to, to implement them and read it. So take a look. I'll, I'll you can look at the link uh, in the um, presentation later if you want to get to it. And also, too, you can download this here. If I had five more minutes before I was leaving, I would have put a short URL there. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, I've got a very human, unfriendly URL, which is about 12 hours long. But, um, oh, that's another thing. Um, keyword repetition versus density. You know, everybody talked about keyword density years ago, right? Keyword density. And, uh, you know, keyword density, the, the, the ratio of keywords to content, right? Well, Keyword density just, it's, it's irrelevant. Keyword repetition, I know it sounds like the same thing, but it isn't. Keyword density um, is really not something I would pay attention to much anymore. Uh, and probably hasn't for a while. Uh, get a couple of, if you have a short, if you have short copy, get two or three keywords into the copy. If it's long copy, get five or six. It's as simple as that. I mean, we, we've looked at keyword densities on successful pages, and we're finding like less than 1% is where the top pages are at, and maybe even closer to half a percentage point. The keyword density is incredibly low, right? So uh, don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to just getting the keyword in the page a few times and reading it. Read it out loud. If it sounds stupid to you, if it looks, if it sounds like, again, SEO gibberish, it probably is, right? It's junk. Okay, so what is the difference? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like uh, hand grenades and laser guns. Uh, you know, it's uh, keyword repetition. You just want to repeat the keyword a few times. Get it into the page. But keyword density, you know, taking a tool or uh, scraping the content and counting the words and comparing it. Just a waste of time. Just look at the page if it makes sense and includes the keywords a few times without sounding over optimized. Because you can get penalized for over optimizing a page, right? So, does that make sense? Well, I mean, so density, there's, there's no formula. formula to figure out how many times you yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, if, uh, the formula would be how many uh, words on a page versus how many keywords on a page, that ratio. Right? So you're actually doing the math. With keyword repetition, we're just eyeballing it. We're saying, okay, we've got it here a few times. It makes sense. It reads right. It looks right. Um, it doesn't say keyword, 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 keyword. And then you just want to, you know, blow your brains out by the time you're at, it, at the end because, you know, the purpose of the page isn't for you. So basically, it's less repetition. It's less repetition. But it's, it's less formulaic as well. I mean, it's, it's clearly more about what feels good rather than, and I think that that's good because, you know, you start, you can send signals, okay? So every page has the exact same precision of, of uh, you know, if you have 5,000 pages on your site and every page has that exact same precise keyword density, and I'm not even sure they factor it now, but let's say they do. Um, you know, every page has that exact ratio, and it's, 
it's just starting to raise a flag. I'd be, I'd be my first question would be how, how, how many months did it take to do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, who would That'd be hard time. to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, well, the other thing too is, I mean, uh, the search engines are really looking for naturally written content, right? Mm -hmm. They're not looking for, um, uh, although they pr disprove this a lot, um, they're not looking for machine generated stuff. They're not looking for scraped content, although, you know, we talked to Aaron Wall, he's big on Mahalo like, lately. He's, he's uh, not understanding why that site exists. But whatever your opinion on that is, um, machine generated pages actually still rank, uh, but they're far and few between now compared to five, six years ago, right? So they're looking for naturally written pages by a human, and they're getting better and better at sniffing those pages out, and they're not perfect, but it's getting better. I think one of the best things you can do is just read it out loud. You know, read it out loud, read it to somebody, and they're like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. You know, you, you, you played an ad, you could go back and, you know, and sometimes too, you may not want to, a lot of times we're working on pages that already exist, so we're, we're looking for opportunities, we're taking keywords, and we're trying to align them with existing content, and then once we've targeted a, key, uh, a page that aligns with a particular key phrase, then we go in and modify it, and it really is quite simple to do. So you could, you could theoretically write your content as long as you, as long as you knew the general concept that you were, uh, and then go back and work the keyword in, in a few strategic places. That's, that's a reasonable approach too. So is the only difference in literary style? Then it'd be what? In like a uh, literary style? The density lacks of the literary style? Um, I think it forces you to um, try and put a keyword in a number of places where it may not be necessary. So for example, if, if you looked at a, 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 a couple paragraphs of text and you were like, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. I just wrote the best copy I've ever written in my life. Right? And then, oh, my keyword density is off. I've got to get two more keywords in there. Well, those two keywords really could ruin that copy, right? This is an extreme, you know, it's kind of a silly example. But you get the point is that you're, you're, you're basing your content more on the formula than you are about what your audience would like to, like to see, you know? I mean, all of like these usability is really gonna be a key component to search engine algorithms, right? How long you spend on a page, whether you click the back uh, button on the browser, um, what pages you looked at, how, you know, again, how long you stayed on the site, all of these things are a gauge of the quality of a page, right? So what they're looking for is quality pages because that's in their business. They can make what, 20, Google for example, 20 odd billion in revenues off of their um, contextual ads. It's big business. So if their organic results are junk, um, nobody will want to visit the pages. So they lose out big time if they're not presenting good quality content. And you know, uh, the Bain Yahoo merge is, you know, all of a sudden now they're going to grow to a quarter of the, the um, search uh, volume, right? They're they're going to now be a, a big huge player. Um, these, there's a lot at stake here, so they're looking for really good quality content. And there's some. Sites prove that to be not true. <laughs> for the most part, that's what they're looking for. I should preface by saying I'm new to SEO. Um, could you comment on keyword placement and discrete entities like tables? Tables. Does um, that do they, does that make a difference at all? Because it's now not natural flow. It's you have an opportunity to say something like like tables as a as a like a page construction method or no, tables just as table a in a let's say it was table on something hours I ran. In place A, right? Do I want to say hours I ran in place A, hours I ran in place B, place C, you know that sort of thing? If I'm trying to highlight hours. So is that table? Um, it's it's with text essentially. Yeah, I mean I, I think that's. Good. Does it help? Hinder? No different. Text helps. So a table, yeah. If it's tabular data, use a table. Um, if it adds to the experience on the page, even you know, great. And if, if um, 
you know, because you, you go to so many pages and there's just very little there, right? So, uh, no, I think it's good to add content. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. We're going to get to the no dose page here. Yeah, it, it's big, um, you know, for, for a couple of reasons. First is what state do you want Google to index, right? So you have a page and there's, there are myriad options and configure, you know, I mean, there's just so many different ways that page could be displayed. What state do you want the search engine, regardless of which one it is, what state do you want them to see, right? The other thing is Ajax can really screw up the context of a page. So for example, if you've optimized a page for, um, again, voters, right? But you have all these Ajax boxes and et cetera that, um, well, I mean, you have, you have a problem in that. Uh, if, 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 the, if the content's in external files, which I mean, right, technically that's where it would be, right? An XML file up, whatever. Um, it's now no longer part of the page. Um, the search engine might find the link and go visit that other page, but it's, it's a different page. So you, you're, you're taking away um, content from the page and you're changing the context, right? It's, what's the page about now? It's about something completely different. So the, it's a challenge. Um, they're, they're, Google actually has a really good presentation. They're, they're looking to drive some standards on this. There's some good pages. Um, they have a presentation. I have a link to it. I happen to have a link to it in the, uh, my presentation, and you'll see the Ajax page. We don't get to it. Follow that, because it's, it's just a quick way to show um, what's going on, the complexities involved. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's worth a view. Oh, navigation. This is a complex subject. Or is it? I mean, just put it in HTML and CSS. You know? jQuery. So, you know, it's all good stuff if you, if you, if it's, if it's, if it ends up as being HTML content on the source of the page, then great. Uh, but, you know, try and avoid using, you know, JavaScript links are actually being seen um, flash text is being seen, uh, you know, a lot of technologies that maybe five years ago, you know, an SEO would probably have a pulmonary embolism hearing even somebody mention, you know, it's like, hey, oh, flash, oh my gosh. Um, you know, it's just something that we avoided like the play, right? But it's getting less so. I think people are getting smarter about these technologies too. So for example, you know, we'll get to this later, but, um, you know, Flash, for example, is, uh, I think it's a great tool, or silver, whatever it is, it's a great tool, I keep forgetting where I am, right? Um, it's a great tool for, um, a page, for adding elements, elements to a page that augment the user experience and help achieve the goal um, of that page, right? If you can't say that, then, the, then it's wasted technology. All you're doing is putting cool stuff on a page and, and annoying people in the process, right? So, again, if it helps achieve the objective of the page, good stuff. But don't use it as a page, uh, you know, page construction technology. It makes it just really harder to optimize. There are some ways around it. Um, so, you know, I don't say, I'm not the kind of SEO. I, I realize as an SEO, there's just so many compromises to be made. There's brand, there's, you know, you have a lot of people who have a, a stake in a website. So you have to make compromises. If, you know, if you didn't, you know, a, a, a web page would, would, would have, you know, 600 words of text and nothing else, maybe a couple of optimized images and some videos that are, but it wouldn't be very interesting, right? 
So there's balance. Everything has to be in balance. And in terms of navigation, you know, the simple approach to that is just use HTML and CSS. Like, you know, that drop down I showed you in that scarf site, that's all, you know, divs and actually it's a unordered list. So it's beautiful code. But it, it achieves a cool drop down effect that, you know, a few years ago we would be challenging to do, but uh, now is quite simple. So let's see. Now another another key area is to optimize your you know, we're we're now in the age of universal search, right? So optimizing all of your content, all of your resources on on and off the site whether it's your Google channel, your Vimeo account, your, um, uh, your content delivery network, uh, you know, that's a, that's a, you know, a common uh, 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 thing to, to use now to uh, help reduce page load, now that page load is considered to be a ranking factor. So optimize those, use tags, use uh, titles, again, a PDF title is really important. How it's named, how it's uh, the file name, um, an image, same. I have a client that gets 40% of his traffic. He gets, uh, I forget, 200,000 visitors a year just through his images, right? People looking for the products he sells through image search. Conversion rate is lower, right? But he's getting business just because his images are optimized. So it's important. Universal search is no longer, it's not just organic results now, it's about video, it's about Twitter, it's about Facebook, it's about, you know, I mean, video is, I think they said um, by 20, this is a guess, but by 2012 or so, um, 90 odd percent of bandwidth will be consumed by video. So if you're not in the video game, you have to rethink that strategy. Uh, boy, we covered a lot of that already, but a couple things about images, you know, the words around the images actually um, are important. Uh, are the images optimized and relevant to the rest of the page content? You know, these are keys. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, you know, with, with alt text and titles and et cetera, be descriptive, don't be long-winded. It's not a Leo Tolstoy novel. Um, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, I'm, I'm putting some people to sleep already. Um, <laughs> that's the joy about being in the tech space, is just, just watching all the eyes roll back. Um, yeah, be descriptive, but don't be long-winded. You know, um, that's key. All right, I think we covered the rest of that already. Hmm? Oh, uh, Google search, um, I image search. It's important, and 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 the size of the image too. I I I've got a mental block on the width and height. I think it's two fifty by. Gosh, if this is important to you, email me later and I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> but I've forgotten the numbers. But, um, but yeah, width and height is, is, um, uh, is, uh, is also an important um, uh, attribute to have. Wait, are you saying Google looks for the width and height? Yeah. Like somebody would search for a certain, like they're looking for a picture for a certain height? Yeah, I don't remember if they do that or not, but I think that they are looking for a certain type of uh, quality. Right, so um, so the width and height is is, is an element, uh, an attribute I would add. All right, now here here's my no dose. Does anybody need any? I'm gonna. You you you, you need some. Okay. I have a question. Before. Yeah. How does Google rank images? How does Google rank images? Um, uh, uh, file name. Uh, uh, they'll use. Uh, here, we'll back up a little bit because there were there were some signals there. Um, you know, 
alt text. Um, uh, also, too, you know, I mean, we're we're a developer group, right? So, um, you know, if you have pages like, I mean, God, we use I don't know if anybody's using spacers anymore, but if you're using spacers for your layout or your, uh, you know, you have a certain amount of elements that are for design purposes only, but are not utilized to um, attract visitors, right? They're they're there to enhance the visitor experience once they're there, but they're not necessarily to attract visitors. So, you know, put, put those in empty alt text quotes. So, um, and that, that's a standard, that's a, that's a, a W, yes? You say words and captions around the image matters? Yeah. Um, does that include wrapping text, or is this a separate, maybe? Proximity, you know, so, okay. uh, you know, if you had a, um, an image and then you, Am I walking around? Is that messing up your works here a little bit? Um, yeah, you, you have an image, and then everybody always adds a caption below, or uh, uh, or the, just the, the subject matter relates to the image, right? So they're factoring this. So this is one of the ways. Um, alt text, file name. This is another key. Get, get the file name, you get keywords into the file name, or get a keyword phrase into the file name. Um, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, the title really isn't a, the title attribute really isn't a helpful uh, signal, but it is, like I say here, it's helpful for visitors. Not necessarily, you know. So, for example, somebody earlier uh, today again asked me, my site is ranking really high on the seven pack in Google. It's number one for a really important keyword phrase, but how come it's not showing up in the organic results underneath? Well, there are different algorithms. We really quite haven't figured out any rhyme or reason with the seven pack, but um, but yeah, they're, they're completely different algorithms. Um, so they'll, they'll, they'll not necessarily, I, I don't know that there is some, there isn't some crossover. I mean, if the domain is an authoritative domain and it's mature and has a uh, you know, good reputation, then I don't see why that wouldn't have an effect on the image, but no, it's a, it's a, it's a, different, it's a different platform. Google gets its data, where, where do search engines get their data? Um, uh, and here, here is a site, right? We, we, um, here are a search engine results page. Uh, this snippet, in this case, is the meta description. Yeah, here, right? And this is the, the, the title element. So uh, these two are really key. Again, getting back to that direct response, getting the keyword in the, the title. Um, uh, this particular site is a client. They're just really killing their space. They're doing very well because they're generating really, really good content. Um, and it's optimized for some good well. So. Um, However, they won't necessarily pull the meta description from the tag if the search isn't necessarily a direct um, hit in terms of relevance. So they may pull another part of the uh, page content into the snippet. Um, and we're seeing in that case some really long snippets. This is the snippet here maybe up to 300 words, yeah, some 300 characters, I'm sorry, some, some, um, some monstrous, I mean, twice the size of normal 
Um, but those are generally more in long tail terms. Any, qu any questions there? Yeah? Yeah, I have a question about, you know when you pull up a website and then it gives you links that below the text, it gives you other pages you can link to? Oh, the indented results? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you, is that something you tweak or is that something Google does or how does that work? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, you know, usually they'll find two pages that rank with, for a given term, um, and they may have both been optimized for that term, or they're just really highly relevant. And usually, you'll find that occurs on more authoritative sites. You won't find it happens on all sites, but the sites that it does occur on. In fact, this site here gets a lot of intended results, um, but they have thousands of pages. Um, a lot of content that's very similar, even though they're optimized differently. Yeah. Oh, here's here's a good one. Um, <coughs> useful meta elements. I, I looked at the site the other day. It had every meta element that you could. I mean, it, the head section was about this long. Um, full of, of metadata, and there's really only three that you, <laughs> that you need to worry about. Um, the title we talked about, I'm not going to bore you with that one, I've already kicked that one to that, but um, one interesting thing we're, we're seeing over the last couple of years, slightly longer um, t uh, dis displays of on the title tag, so let me go back here. Here. Um, usually about 66 characters, right? But if the word falls within 70, but is, if it is within the 66th character, it will display the full 70. Does that make sense? Am I describing that accurately? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, obviously you want to try and keep your Title tags of like 65, 66 characters, but if you, if you need to go over, you can try and work it. Meta description, we talked about really important tag. I mean, title is king, meta description is number two. I mean, it's just, it's, it's important just as a direct response tool, nothing else. Meta keywords of Dodo Bird. Um, do you like do you like my my keyword? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, if if you hired a search firm and spent a lot of money targeting keywords that were ideal for your site, wouldn't you just love to put them up on your keywords tag, your element? and just tell the world that those are the keywords we're targeting, right? Well, the other thing too is they're not really considered a ranking factor on top tier engines, right? There's a question about some of them, but for the most part, um, Google just actually, last year just flat out said, yeah, we, we pay no attention to it. Um, I don't always buy what they say. Um, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt sometimes, but um, I haven't bothered with this tag for several years. In fact, I take it out. And again, it boils down more to competitive intelligence data rather than, you know, does it, you know, and this site, this site has several number ones out of the 400 million plus results. Ah, Meta Robots. Great time. Um, dangerous as all hell. You can really screw up your day with it, but it's a very useful, very useful tool. Um, let's say you were running a PPC campaign, right? You had two campaigns, and you're looking to split test them. You create two, or let's say you have one pay, one uh, campaign, but you're looking to split test the campaign, and you've developed two landing pages, one of which you're okay with with the search engine seeing. The other is almost identical, it's just maybe perhaps you've laid out the page a little different, right? 
Well, you don't want the search engine to see that page, right? Um, but people might link to it, people might um, find it somehow, right? Um, we'll talk about another tag later. Um, but this is a good way to say, okay, um, search engine, we want you to index this page and we want you to follow the links on the page, or we don't want you to index this page. Um, you can do no follow on the linkage side. I, I haven't really found a good use case for that. Does anybody, you know, does anybody, does anybody have a good, Brian, you have a good use case for using no follow on the links? Oh, we've done it to hide the admin session for CMS. Yeah. Uh, oh, the the li within. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Because it's, it's in yeah. the same. Group. No, that, 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 yeah. You just hide that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the back end. Yeah. That's um, the only time we've ever used it. Yeah, yeah. I, I really. That's a good good use of it. But yeah, I don't really have much use for it. Can you say that to a B test? Like to test. Like if you want to play around with your third uh, keyword. Can you use that to play, like, to do an AP test? So, like, for certain hours that you will turn on a website, I mean, other times that you, you will turn off that website? So to that, that it, given page? That yeah. given page. Um, um, all yeah, like, for, you know, a, a PPC um, yeah. campaign, what you might do is, is do a split test, find out which um, test to the control, you know, which, which one works better. And then when you're done testing, you now literally could have sent thousands of people to this other page. I'd probably just redirect them to the other one rather than put the no follow. But while I'm doing the testing, um, you know, or I might use the rel canonical, which frankly probably would be a better tool for that. But we'll get to that. Um, but there are some good, good uses of this. Um, but again, it's it's dangerous because you can shut your site off from, from search engines, which is really a drag. Um, also, too, images, news, video, mobile, geo data, and Google code are now supported in sitemaps, um, at least on Google. Okay, um, I mentioned I, you know you're probably getting tired of me saying Google, 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 but they, they dominate the market, so it's it's you know it's the 800 pound gorilla that's very hard to ignore. So. Um, so you can create sitemaps that include all of that content and submit them to search engines. Page load. Um, you know, why is page load a ranking signal? My take? I mean, it's clearly a usability signal. I mean, if you're sitting, waiting for 20 minutes for a page to load, that's bad usability, right? I mean, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure that one out, right? But, you know, I mean, we've got real-time search. Can you imagine the computational? I mean, I was in a presentation a couple of months ago by one of the staff. Um, he runs the hip-hop uh, development program at um, Facebook. And he was talking about the number of servers they have. Really fascinating. They have tens of thousands of web servers to drive the website. When I say, I don't say 10,000, I say tens of thousands. It's, it's massive, right? Um, and you think of the computational power required, required to drive a site like Facebook, right? And you think of how lightning fast search engines deliver their results, and then you start thinking about the computational power it takes to do that, right? The technology. Uh, it's quite brilliant, really, if you think long and hard about it. Um, so, you know, in the let me just say the like it's about the 90s. Remember, page load was a real big concern because search engines weren't able to really crawl a page fully. You know, they, they you kept your pages really lean because you could get your 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 site crawled completely, right? And it was mostly because of bandwidth. The crawlers just didn't have the the capacity to reach out and find. God forbid, it was like tens of millions of web pages, right? Instead of now billions, right? So. Um, you know, it took a huge amount of processing power to do this, or computational power. And we're kind of back in that boat again, really, if you think about it. I mean, real-time search, you think of the drain of real-time search. Universal search, we're now delivering all sorts of content. So I think those are two, but I think we're getting back to like to the, the, the issue of, you know, uh, 
user experience and, 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 and that, the quality of that experience being a ranking signal, right? So, you know, Occam's razor, you know, revised, you know, if you have two web pages that are both equally good in every aspect except for one takes eight seconds to load and the other one loads in a second, you know, which one is the search engine going to rank higher? You know, eight seconds is typically the threshold where people just bail, right? So they won't wait. So pretty easy, you know, for them to say, hey, you know, do I want to serve a junk page or do I want to serve one that uh, is a better page for the, for the user? And there are several tools. I mean, web, webmaster tools, um, Wiseslow for Firebug, uh, Web Toolkit. Um, these are all good places to, to, to look at, and you can run your pages, you know, install the tool, run your pages through, see how they're performing. You know, most of the time I'm just looking at a visual check. You know, I mean, most of us at this point have a good gauge as to what's fast and what's not. And, you know, obviously it's subjective based on your. Um, we talked about Ajax. Um, uh, we'll skip that. Um, oh, I, you know, this is a huge subject. And I'm afraid to even go into it, um, but I think if, if you're interested in the subject, um, Tim Berners-Lee, um, you know, uh, I think Al Gore thought he was Tim Berners. I don't know, uh, something like that. But this guy really did invent the web, so. Uh, he has a talk on, on TED that's, I'm not sure how long it is, maybe 15 or 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? I heard it's been well, and just full disclosure, I took a course with him. Oh, you did? I see, and cool. I knew that I said, it was the first time they had linked data, product data. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was his baby. Yeah, it is his and baby. And he gave the talk that was similar to his TED talk. To the TED talk? Yeah, yes. yeah, isn't that fascinating, so it right? It's fascinating, just yeah. learning about a folks in front of a friend, RDFAs, yeah, it's passionate he is about it too. Oh, yes, it's like, oh yes. my gosh. It's, it's a great future use for what you're going on. Yeah, watch it, because this is where it's all going. If you haven't seen, if you don't know enough about it, you can't know enough about this, but this is where it's all going. Um, the way websites will work with each other in the future, um, this is where it's all at. Um, and also, too, you know, RDFA is coming in HTML5, right? So, and this is a good primer on micro formats. This is the one I mentioned earlier on Yoast.com. Um, I forget who wrote it, um, but you know I've read a, I've read a lot of articles on these, and if you think I'm boring, holy crap! Wait, you start reading some of the stuff on this, right? <laughs> this one, this one will uh, will will make it more approachable. You know, you, you start seeing instant application of it. Good stuff. Um, oh, fonts and image replacement. This is a great subject. Uh, and how are we doing? I don't know. I've been, I've been having such a grand old time that uh, you, you just tell me when we're getting. Good. Okay. That's as much time as I have. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't mean to cut in. So I, you no, just, I can just I cut can my head use off. Use whatever when time is left. Yeah. Um, fonts and image replacement. I think this is important. Um, you know, there are all sorts of methods for jury rigging some kind of way to get attractive fonts on a website, and it was always, you know, half rear-ended, and it looked, you know, the search engines. I mean, Google actually had an internal debate between their um, web spam team and their search quality. They couldn't decide whether um, whether um, uh, FARC was uh, spam or not. So they don't know, right? I mean, they, they're in conflict. We don't know. We usually, we usually recommend that if some technique involves hiding text, um, then it's usually not a good idea, okay? If the text, now here we get back to the hand check, if, if, if a Spam technician looks at the site, does a hand check, and says, um, okay, this negative indented text is matching the image. They're exactly the same. 
probably okay with that, right? But we get into troubles if they differ and you know what's the intent and things like that, right? Cipher was endorsed by Google in the past, um, but I think that they're starting to solve the problem really with, with these font libraries that are, um, you know, Google has um, uh, on Google on code.google.com they have um, web fonts and previews. And the cool thing is that these fonts are text. You can actually highlight the text like you could HTML tags. I mean, you, you, you've seen it. Um, great stuff. Um, you know, are they perfect? They still look a little jaggy and, you know, there's so, some things to be worked out. But I think this is a step in the right direction. I think it solves a lot of problems. Um, is it ready for prime time? That really is up to you. But, um, but it's a, I think it's a great solution going forward. Does everybody understand how this works? So, so in search is not really like the typical font that I see, or are you talking about very special fonts? Yeah, well, you know, it's okay if you wanted to put, you know, Arial over Dav Sans Serif on your web page, right? But if you wanted this, I don't even know what it is, Brian, you, you probably know. Um, if you wanted this, you had to use image replacement, right? Mm -hmm. But now that's with, with this. Approach, it's not replaced. This is actually selectable text. You can highlight it. You can view the source. It's 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 um, good stuff. And there's you know three links. I know there are other resources available, um, but I think this will get you in the right direction. If, if you know if you want to use something a little more creative than the standard, you know few fonts that are typically available. Um, 404 pages. 404 pages. This is an opportunity. You, you, sh you can make money with 404 pages. Um, when a visitor comes to a 404 page, they were looking for something, right? Um, we're using now on, on, on Drupal, oh, I said the keyword. Um, we're using on Drupal um, a, a module called Search 404, which is really cool because when somebody searches for something and they visit the site and the page is a four, you know, the result is a 404, well, if, you know, the, we're pulling the search term from the header, doing a query on the database and then pushing back some links and say, hey, this page is gone, but were you looking for this, this, or this, right? And that's a good way to retain your visitor, right? Mm -hmm. But also too, let's say you're, let's say you sell widgets, right? And somebody's looking for widgets and they come to a 404 page and you have all sorts of content, but your real goal in life is to sell widgets. Well, let's have an image and say, were you looking for blue widgets, red widgets, pink widgets, you know, or these other results? Let's keep them there, right? Or let's highlight some navigation options that get them in the right direction. And don't redirect them to the home page. Everybody does that, and it's just a bad idea. It's better just to tell the search engine that the page is no longer there, or, 301 redirect them to a page that is relevant. Um, we talked about Flash, Silverlight, um, domain canonicalization, and um, do we want to delve into that? How are we on time, Brian? We're slim on time. Okay. So we'll skip those. Um, We're supposed to work that out, Bob. What's that? I'll give you a hand signal you were supposed to yeah. work that. <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. It's the Tourette's uh, syndrome. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, did, did everybody read that second biggest mistake? <laughs> second biggest mistake most um, site, uh, de most developers make during uh, development during the development process is not disallowing that uh, dev or stage site from the search engines, right? Because what happens is you end up having two versions of your site, right? And if the search engines pick up the original, it considers that to be the source, and then you publish your site, you know, you push it to production, and now you have a duplicate, right? Sounds like kind of a nightmare if 
you know, Google and search engines are good at filtering duplicate content, right? So if you filter out, if you disallow the, 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 the search engines from finding that uh, site, that dev or staging site in the first place, you won't have the duplicate content issue when you push live. However, the first biggest mistake, can anybody guess this one? What do you think the first biggest mistake developers? For publishing, you don't remove this. Okay, you, you win a book. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remove it when you're done. <laughs> because uh, if you don't, the search engine won't find the production site. So, pretty simple. Um, one little robot's text change, and you've solved the problem for your client. And I think, yeah, that's it. Wow, I can't believe we got through 37 slides in only four hours. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Again, you can download the, the, the presentation here. Uh, speaking of Leo Tolstoy, 37 slides, wow, huh? And then, uh, I could be reached in any of these places. So if you have questions, if I've rushed over anything, whatever, uh, feel free to call, email, Twitter. And that's it. Everybody who's running one on that, leave this one for a